Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with our Blooming Catholic Life. And this is one of my basement library book sale finds at the Mayvale Library. I'll try and put the link below because they do have an eBay site and a book sale, a basement book sale like four times a year. So I'll try and put the link below so that you can find that. If you're looking for this book though, hope there's other copies because I grabbed it, but I'm sure it's in other bookstores and websites. This is the Catholic Bible in pictures. I think I paid a dollar for it, so not bad. I was very excited about it. Um, hmm, this one, now I'm trying to remember. Is that where I got this? We've been to a couple bookstores. I go to the bookstores down here looking for uh, Delsimer books, which we did find. <laughs> but I found this one as well. Uh, it says, to the glory of Jesus Christ, who was born to this world as a little child and later gave his life on the cross so that all who believe in him may be saved. And a lovely presentation page there. There is a prefectory note, pre, prefactory note, prefactory note. In this remarkable book, the Bible comes to life before your eye, very eyes. The wonderful events and the great inspiring stories of the Old and New Testament are portrayed in over 1,000 clear, reverent pictures that everyone will understand and enjoy. The illustrations are vibrant with action and realism so that each story becomes a dramatic and moving experience which you will long remember. If you wish to really appreciate the beauty and wisdom of the Bible or introduce a child to it, here is the ideal way to begin. The book offers you the Bible story in three parts. The first, based on the gospel, shows you the life of our Lord. Faithful picture after picture depicts the miraculous events in Bethlehem, Jesus the carpenter, his mission and wonder steeds, and his eternal teachings by the lake, on the hillside, and in the city streets of old Palestine. The familiar people of long ago will seem to live and breathe and move before you as they reenact the greatest drama in the history of the world. Next, you will see unfold before your eyes the story of his people, as the Old Testament tells it. From the creation down to the fall of the Temple of Jerusalem, you will be an eyewitness to the mighty, heart-stirring spectacles. The Garden of Eden, Noah's Ark, Joseph and Pharaoh, the Israelites crossing the Red Sea, Samson and Delilah, David and Solomon, Daniel, Queen Esther, Ruth, all these golden names and others have rung through the ages, take on form, color, and reality, color, color, and reality in the enthralling, sympathetic picture stories shown in this book as upon a panoramic screen. As fascinating as all the rest is authentic and superb pictorial presentation of the beginnings of the church, as related in the Acts of the Apostles and the Epistles, you go voyaging in many strange and ancient lands with Peter and Paul, Luke, Matthew, Mark, and John, and watch their courage and faith carry them through many perils to the final glorious victory for Christ and the church. No pains have been spared to make this handsome book worthy of each unique subject. The text is based on the edition of the Bible preferred by the confraternity of Christian doctrine. Eleven well-known artists prepared the 1,000 illustrations with reverence and sympathy, and these were all verified by Bible experts for historical accuracy. As a distinguished scholar and author, the right Reverend Monsignor Dante del Fiatur Fiorentio served as editor. Church leaders, scholars, and laymen have acclaimed the book as faithful to the great religious heritage of the Catholic Church and recommended it for reading in Catholic homes and schools. Now we have title pages here. And notice it is printed by Roman Catholic Books in Fort Collins, Colorado. I have no idea if that publisher still exists. And then there is a reproduction of a letter from His Excellency Monsignor Damianco Tordini, the pro-secretary of state of the Vatican from uh, May 18, 1956. And it reads, Right Reverend and Dear Monsignor, I have met Mr. Sutliff, who presented me with a copy of the Bible, Bible which you have edited. It is a nice volume, very interesting, and very suitable for children. The boys of Villa Nazareth have already looked through it with great interest and will be a great usefulness for them for the study of catechism and of religious in, religion in England. English. With the sentiments of my high esteem and cordial regard, I remain yours sincerely in Christ. And he lived in Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn 5, New York? I don't know. Um, and he then, there is a Nihil Obstat as well as an Imprimatur given in um, December of 1955. And that's there as well. Um, 
it does give you several reasons why this is good. It, it does tell you it. You're, you've been taught perhaps to read the Bible from cover to cover, and that can be a little bit confusing because that's how you do a regular book, right? But the Bible doesn't lend itself easily to that method. It is a library rather than one book. And more and more we are being accustomed to see things rather than just read the words. And so this gives us some pictures. So they've selected main stories of the Bible and used pages as a screen on which to project their movement keeping in briefest possible captions the essential parts of the story in the language based on the Confraternity of Christian Doctrine version. Um, let see here. So it's the story of Jesus, the story of his people, and the story of his church. Um, goes on a little bit. So part one, there is one page front and back in the index, sorry, the table of contents, Part two is a little over one page, and part three is the smallest. Oh, there says there really are color illustrations in here. I saw only the black and white ones, but there must be color in here somewhere. I'm flipping through trying to find them for you now. Well, I hope I find them when I show you the book in a second. But supposedly, there are some color pictures. Oh, I just saw one. Okay, so let's look at the table of contents. The print is decidedly small, but it's going to... Tell us what part we're in by number and the section, right? And then it's going to give us the name of a story, the Bible references, which could be more than one book, and what page numbers it's on in here. And that format is followed through. And oftentimes, yeah, there's more than one, especially for the Gospels. And then here is the start of part two. So quite a chunky monkey here, right? There's a lot in there. And then the picture credits are down here. Let me see, do we jump straight in? Is there anything in the back? There is an index in the back. It's again, a little smaller than we'd like, but ta-da, four column index. Woo-hoo, get your magnifiers out for that. Very nice though. There's always those complicated names and things. And so it's nice that there is an index in the back. Part one, the story of Jesus. In these pages, you will see unfold before your eyes the greatest drama of all kind. It is based on the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first four books of the New Testament. Like countless numbers of men, women, and children before you, you will find it brings you courage and comfort and lifts up your heart. Here you will journey in a strange and distant land and be an eyewitness to marvelous happenings. You can see how this could be useful for Alexia Dabina, especially if you are having, this is why I got it. I really got it for those of us who struggle with um, the Ignatian contemplation form of Lexio Divina, where we have difficulty imagining ourselves in the scene. Of course, people may find that now in The Chosen, maybe that's easier for you, but I almost find that too prescribed because it has all the mannerisms and things that people may not or may not have had. They added so much that it's kind of constricting. Whereas this is just giving us some brief pictures, not everything, but enough brief pictures to perhaps spark your imagination more. So you will walk with him and talk with him. Behold his kindly deeds of healing and consolation. Hear his message by the lake and on the hillside and in the city street. You will learn eternal truths about God and the life of man that will inspire and thrill you. They're really trying to get kids excited, right? So it starts out with that exciting opening. And then we start with the birth of a prophet in the days of Herod, king of Judea. And it gives you numbers for each picture. And that's probably helpful for the, the picture credits you can kind of see things going on. Oh, here's the angel appearing to Zechariah. They are really engaging without giving away too much at all. Oh, oh, look at him. Is that little John the Baptist? And the child grew and was in the deserts. Yeah, that's not something you see often. Very nice. Tidings for Mary. Now there is a little bit more written out here. Not everything is a picture but look at these lovely little ends. When they have to have more text or feel it really necessary, there is more. What do you think? Um, I thought that was a dark eared page. Now, I know I did see something in color that was towards the front here. Oh, that's funny. Somebody's little note paper, but there's no note on it. I guess they were reading, the wise men seek the child. See again. Oh, wait, I can see shiny. So that's probably the color photo. This is, uh, Jesus calls his first disciples, but the picture, oh, so there's a section of color photos. Starting on 
it's inserted into page 26. It was between pages 26 and 27. There's a small section of color photos and it has a it's a full size picture. Whatever it is, it's going to be a full size picture. It's going to have a little caption and then it's going to say with an open bracket but no closed bracket um, what page it's on. So here is Jesus worked with Joseph as a carpenter and advanced in wisdom and grace before God and men. And so you do have a full color photo. Look how blonde little baby Jesus is. Anyway, it does give you the page number. See, some things kind of might have been better without the color. But his parents both had dark hair, so very interesting how pale that boy is. Very odd. Um. Oh. Well, that's interesting. Because between these two, he, his hair gets dark between these two pages. <laughs> I don't know. But it would open a conversation with kids where you can talk about things like how pictures people get depicted over time. In the many depictions of Christ, I think he stays. Oh, no. He is blonde or light brown hair or dark hair. And so it changes throughout. But we can talk about how different people interpret um, Jesus into their culture through art. And we can talk about how art is different that way and it, it you know it's not perfect but it is going to open that discussion because kids are bound to see different images of christ or mary appearing in different forms um different forms different colorings really but taking on the characteristics of different people from around the world okay so lots of great pictures Oh, the soldiers bribed. I'm on page 153. Some of the guard reported to the chief priests all that had happened that night in the tomb. There had been a great earthquake, they said, and an angel lord came down from heaven and drawing near, rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment like snow, and for fear of him the guards were terrified and became like dead, dead man. The chief priests assembled with the elders and consulted together. They gave much money to the soldiers, telling them, Say, his disciples came at night and stole him while we were sleeping. And if the governor hears of this, we will persuade him and keep you out of trouble. The soldiers took the money and did as they were told. And so you can see those panels there. Again, such beautiful artwork, right? It does draw you into the pictures. Um, let's get something from the last. Simon the Sorcerer and Philip and the Ethiopian. And so we have some more artwork here to look at. Again, this is a time period. This is the 1950s. These are artists in their own day and time doing their own pictures. And they really are. They aren't childish at all. These are real pictures into Europe. So we have some real pictures going on in the captions. And if you want to know what Bible verses they came from, take the title, Paul's Third Missionary Journey, they're not numbered, but let's go back, and we know it's in part three, right? So we're going to go to part three in our table of context, and it said Paul's third missionary journey. Okay, yep, or you could look it up by page number, remember? And it's going to say it's from Acts 18, 23 through 19, and 41. Okay, uh, what, what I'm processing here is, I think it says, because it has Acts 18, comma, 23 through 19, comma, 41. So I don't think those are all chapter numbers. Let's go ahead and look that up. I know I'm being silly here, but Acts 19, I just want to tell you it correctly. Acts, we're going to come down to 19. Are there that many verses? 19, 20, and 21. Um, he passed through Macedonia and Achaia, go to Jerusalem, saying, do, 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 do. 21, 22, 22. That makes. Oh, sorry. My finger jumped. 23. Oh, okay. Okay. So it has Acts 18, 23 dash 19 comma 41 so this means acts 18 chapter 18 verse 23 through acts 19 verse 41 and the next one picks up um 
Acts 19, verse 21 and 22, um, Acts chapter 20, 1 through 4, and 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Aha! So we have uncovered the system. You'll get used to it pretty quickly, but I know in times past, the chapters and numbers, the listings were slightly different. But like the story on Queen Esther is just, just the book of Esther, so that's not confusing at all. <laughs> um, I do like... The, the only thing, okay, the only comment I have on the table of contents is after part three, the story continues and the index are here in part three. And I wish that had been here, but I guess that they ran out of space, so they tucked it over here. I do like how they have that in all capitals, but that index probably also could have been in all capitals to mark that it was something different as well. Um, so check this out. This is 1955. Let me get to the... The copy, the data in the front again. The Catholic Bible and Pictures, edited by the Right Reverend Monsignor Dante del Fiorento, Roman Catholic Books in Fort Collins. And it's from 1955. Uh, well, the one letter in it says 1956. The imprimatur is from 1955. The letter from the Pro Secretary of the Secretary of State at the Vatican is from 1956. So you're going to have to check those dates. I'll try and look that up and put that in the description below. Again, friends, this is the Catholic Bible in pictures. Friends, may God bless you and keep you. May make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the good Lord bless you. In nomine Patris, affiliate Spiritus Sancti. Amen.